Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the oil level too high in a Volkswagen T6.1 Transporter, Caravel, California, Shuttle, all of them have this potential problem if you've got a diesel. So if you've watched any of our other videos, you'll know that we've had a message come up on the dashboard quite a few times which says the oil level is too high on our brand new van. Now we've done quite a few miles, so we've done about two, three thousand miles now, and this first started at about 1500 miles and we could not understand it. We had absolutely no idea why it was doing this. We thought we've not added any oil, the van's brand new, it's not done it before, why is the oil level too high? Well, in this video, we're going to explain what's going on, how you can fix it yourself, and how you can stop it from happening in the future. So let's have an, a bit of an explanation of what's going on and why the oil level gets to be too high. This is all down to the diesel particulate filter and how it regenerates. So very quickly, diesel particulate filter is in the exhaust system and it's designed to take away the soot from a diesel engine. All part of the European regulations, not gonna go into all of that in this video, but effectively it's a large filter, it's a big cylinder, and over time, when you run a diesel engine with a diesel particulate filter, the diesel particulate filter starts to clog up with the soot. Now the way that you clean the diesel particulate filter out is by the engine and the whole system regenerating itself. Now what a regeneration is, is effectively it gets really hot, that diesel particulate filter gets really hot and then it burns all of the soot off which is inside it and it cleans itself out. It's quite a clever system. Now the key here is how the engine gets that diesel particulate filter to be really hot. And the way that the California does it, the way that the T6.1 engine does it from Volkswagen is by injecting extra diesel on the exhaust stroke when the engine is firing. Now, that sounds quite complicated, but effectively what that means is that it uses diesel on the, on the, on the, um, as part of the normal running of the engine, but then on the exhaust um, stroke, extra diesel goes in. And the reason that happens is because the engine then pushes that out to the diesel particulate filter, unburnt, and then it ignites uh, uh, spontaneously in the uh, diesel particulate filter, which then gets the diesel particulate filter really hot, and then that burns off all of the uh, soot which it's got inside of it. Now the biggest problem with doing just that is that the diesel particulate filter, if it's in the middle of a regeneration and you turn the engine off, then sometimes unburnt diesel can go into the engine oil and the reason it does that is because it's in the cylinder the engine stopped moving and the diesel runs down the cylinder and goes into the sump now it's just unfortunate that this happens it's it's kind of a byproduct of the way that they've designed the regeneration so effectively if you stop the engine while it's mid regen what um, mid regeneration this has the potential to happen. And if it happens enough, so lots of short journeys, lots of attempted regenerations when you've turned the engine off, unbeknowing to you, then that's enough to make the oil level appear to rise. So it's not extra oil, it's actually, it's actually diesel going into the oil, which then mixes with the oil. So you've got a diesel and oil mix in your engine, making that level rise. So that is exactly what's happening when you get a message on the dashboard which says, oil level too high. So we first noticed this when we were on our Outer Hebrides trip, as I'm sure you've seen in our videos. And the way that we tried to deal with this was calling Volkswagen Assist, asking them what was going on. They sent a man out, he checked the oil level. He said it looked a little bit high, but nothing to worry about. Sent us on our way. By that point, the light had gone off. We thought everything was fine. Well, in actual fact, what we found out later was every 100 kilometers of driving, um, the light came back on again, um, so around 62 miles. Um, what we've read uh, through some of the engineering manuals and things that we've seen from Volkswagen just by searching through the web is that the oil level sensor will automatically reset 
when you open and close the bonnet and then it takes that period of time for it to measure the oil level in the van to know whether it's uh, got the uh, correct level in or not. Now interestingly, um, later on in our Outer Hebrides holiday, we went to a garage and they took some oil out of the van to get it to the right point on the dipstick because we rang them again because the light had come back on. Now when they did that, they took 400 millilitres of oil out of the engine and that got it to be just in the right place in the dipstick. So on the dipstick, there is a, uh, a ball at the bottom, a plastic ball at the bottom, there's a hatch section and there's a plastic ball on the top. The right oil level on that dipstick is in the hatch section. Um, so they removed 400 mil out of the engine and then it got it to be just at the right point at the top of that hatch section on the dipstick. Obviously when we got the van back, oil level light was off because they'd opened and shut the, uh, the bonnet and we drove for 100 kilometers and the oil level light came back on again, even though the oil level was correct in the van. Now, what we've subsequently found is that the oil level sensor needs to reduce by enough to be able to see that there's a change. And when that change is significant enough, it will turn the light off and then you can put more oil back in and then everything's fine again. So in reality, what that means is that to be able to prevent this from happening, you have to take a load of oil out, not below the hatch section, of course, drive it around for a while so that the van realises, so over 100 kilometres so that the van realises, and then top it back up again, and then everything's okay. And we've done exactly that, and we'll explain to you in a few minutes the tools that we did. We did it at home, and we haven't had the light come back on since. So in terms of preventing it, how do you prevent this happening? The easiest way to prevent it from happening is to not switch off your engine if you're in the middle of a diesel particulate filter regen. Now it would have been great if Volkswagen had put a light on the dashboard which told you that it was happening, but they haven't. So you have to kind of watch out for the signs that it's doing a diesel particulate filter regeneration. And the way that you do that is you'll see when the, the van is idling, the revs usually sit at about 800, 850 RPM, uh, so just visibly lower than 1,000 on the dashboard. When, you do, when, when the vehicle's doing a regen, it tends to be at about 1,050, 1,100 RPM, so just above 1,000 RPM on idle, so neutral uh, and stationary. What you'll also tell with a diesel particulate regen is if you open the door, you can smell it. You can smell a, a diesel particulate regen Basically, the only way of really describing it is that the vehicle smells hot. Um, and if it smells hot, and it's not like a brake smell or a clutch smell or anything like that, it's, it's a fairly unique smell, but you'll be able to know that vehicle's hot, engine revs are high. If it's at all possible for you not to switch the engine off at that moment, don't. Just let it idle. Ideally, just keep driving, um, but realize that's impractical. Just let it, let it finish doing that cycle and then the engine revs will fall down uh, start stop will activate so it'll um, uh, it'll switch the engine off under start stop and everything's good another quick telltale way of knowing whether it's doing a diesel particulate regen is obviously if those revs are high and the start stop doesn't work or it's disabled so a little a with a cross through it on the dashboard if that happens it's probably doing a regen at that point now Interestingly, we've kind of modified our behavior now as we drive the van. So if we've gone to do some shopping or we've just gone out in the van, pulled into a car parking space, what we don't do is put it in park, turn the engine off as we always used to, handbrake on. Um, what we do now is we go into the parking space, put it in park, handbrake on, don't switch the engine off, but we keep our foot on the brake um, because then it should go into start stop mode. Uh, don't take your seatbelt off because otherwise it won't go into start-stop mode either. So leave your seatbelt on and if it goes into start-stop mode, that's enough for us to say it's not doing a regen and we turn it off. If it doesn't uh, go into start-stop mode for any reason, we just double check the things that it needs to have to be able to go into start-stop mode. And if they're not, if they're, if they're all okay, but the engine revs are high, then usually either Sarah goes in and does the shopping or I go in and do the shopping and we leave the van on just on idle until it's finished and then we turn it off. So,
So in terms of how you can fix this yourself, what we did, we, we live a hundred mile round trip from the dealer. So it's taking time off work. It's going down there probably for them to say, leave it with us for the day and finding something to do. And oh, it's just a, a pain. And actually through a bit of reading, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a mechanic, but I don't mind working on things with oil and you know, all that sort of stuff in the garage. Um, what we found was that you can buy an oil syringe because uh, what I definitely was not going to do was start taking all of the under trays off and the sump plug and all of that sort of stuff from the engine. So I wasn't going to go and do all of that here at home. Uh, so I bought an oil syringe, it comes with a tube um, and it's designed to go down the dipstick hole uh, for you to be able to take oil out. And it's designed for mowers and all of that kind of stuff um, for doing oil changes. So I bought one of these, Amazon, uh, have a look in the description for uh, the link. Um, and the tube was too fat to go down, to go down uh, the dipstick hole. So got a connector, warmed up some silicon tube, which I had in the garage anyway, which is a smaller bore, um, warmed all of that up with some warm water because it makes it easier to put together, put all of that stuff together. Um, and lo and behold, I've got a syringe which I can take some oil out with. So bearing in mind, this is when we got home from the Outer Hebrides. So we got home and the oil level was correct on the dipstick. So it was at the top of the hatch section. So I, de I decided here to take half a litre out. Um, so I took half a litre of oil um, out of the engine, left it, checked the oil level on the dipstick, and it was about um, between a third and a half. Um, the level was between a third and a half on the dipstick. Uh, in the hatch section. So I was happy that I could drive it with that much oil in. So we did 150 kilometers, something like that, probably 120 miles, 130 miles, something along those lines. And what that then meant was that the light didn't come on. Um, we'd obviously got to the point where the level sensor had realized that there was a big enough difference in oil volume and therefore it was okay. So after that, we put some more oil back in. And being slightly cautious, I've put 250 mil of oil back in, which has now got it to be about two thirds full on the dipstick. And I think for me now, I, I'm tempted to put another, two, uh, another 250 mil in, which will take it up to exactly where it was before I took some out. And obviously I'm put, when I put oil in, I'm using fresh oil. I'm not putting the old stuff back in. I'm using fresh uh, oil of the right grade. So I'm put 250 mil in, we've driven it around now for probably another 500 miles, no light. So we've done exactly what I suggested. So you've, you've taken enough oil out for it to realize that it's okay. You've put some oil back in again, light hasn't come back on. And what I would expect is if I put another 250 mil in now to bring it up to the top of the hatch section, just where it was, I suspect the light would still be off. Um, so. Although I haven't done that, I don't think I am going to do that. I'm going to leave it alone because it's, it's working okay and it's perfectly okay in that hatch section. The only thing which bothers me about this whole process is the dilution of the oil from the diesel. Now, clearly, um, in an ideal world, you'd drain all the oil, you'd fill it back up again. The problem is, and I've read about other people with T6.1 transporters who have had this issue, of overfilled oil, they take it to the dealer. The dealer says, oh yeah, I know exactly what this is. It's the diesel going into the oil. They drain the oil, they fill it back up again, and then 100 kilometers later, the light comes back on again. And it's because that sensor has not seen a big enough difference in the oil level. And that's a real challenge because what dealer is gonna do an oil change on a van and then fill it up to be you know, a third full uh, on the dipstick? Because the customer is gonna say, you haven't filled my oil level back up again. So all this talk online, anyone who's done any research on this, which is looking at the software updates, what I believe the software update is due to do, and I've not actually spoken to anyone who's had this yet, so I don't know whether it actually exists. Uh, there's a lot of talk about it. The dealers are saying, don't worry, there's a software fix coming, etc., etc. I'd love to know if any of you have had it and if you had an explanation as to what it actually has done, because in my mind, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to change the amount of uh, regen cycles that happen. And one thing I should say is they happen every two hours. 
um, on the vehicle, two hours of driving on the vehicle. So it either changes the amount of those that happen down, so this, off, this issue doesn't happen as often, or it changes the way that the oil level sensor works and then springs the, the light on the dashboard. And that could mean that it's less sensitive. It could mean that it resets quicker or notices uh, it's more sensitive in looking at the, uh, the level inside the van. So I don't know what that software is gonna do. I don't think it's gonna be fewer regens because to get through the latest Euro emission standards, Volkswagen have obviously had to set this van up in a certain way and to change those settings afterwards through software to slacken them off, I just can't see that happening. If they were tightening them up, I could understand it, but if they were slackening them off, I just can't believe that that would be the case. So I think it's gonna to be to do with the oil level sensor and the way that that works. But if you have had a software update and it's all fixed and it all works and you know more about this subject than me, please, please, please do say I am not, I don't profess to know everything there is to know about this. Everything I'm talking about, uh, I've read online, I've tested with our own van, I've kind of seen with my own eyes and I've read Volkswagen kind of engine documents about how the level sensor works and all that sort of stuff. So that's basically what I'm sharing with you. What I'll do in this video, hopefully by now you'll have seen a few overlays where I've talked about the dipstick and kind of shown you on the dipstick whereabouts the, the right level is, what the right oil is. Uh, I'll have shown you a, kind of a, 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 me using the, um, uh, the oil syringe that I bought as well. If you do work on your own van, it's at your own risk. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just explaining what we've done. Please use the right PPE, so use gloves, use goggles, use newspaper everywhere, because trust me, as soon as you start doing anything with oil, it always finds a way onto my trousers, onto my top, onto the driveway, and then Sarah comes running after me and shouting at me quite a bit. So just please take all the right precautions if you're gonna do any of this stuff on your own van. For us, it saved us a 100 mile round trip going to the dealer to do something which I actually think they would have drained the oil or they would have got it to the right level and said it's fine and then 100 kilometres later the light would have come back on again. I genuinely believe the dealers haven't quite got a grip on exactly how this latest version of the regen and everything else is actually working in the vans. It's really new for them, I do understand that. So that's our little story. I hope that's been helpful for you all. If it has, please like this video. If you can feel it in your hearts to subscribe to our channel, we really hope you will. And we'll see you again soon for some more California time.